Today I'd like to share a simple visualization tool I developed for the quantum harmonic oscillator in Python. The quantum oscillator is of particular interest to physicists because of its shared similarity to the classical oscillator. Both share a quadratic potential that varies as the square of the distance from a stable equilibrium point. The second order differential Schrodinger equation is much more easily numerically approximated than explicitly solved for, however the oscillator is one of the few quantum systems that has an analytic solution to this equation. Not only that, the oscillator is also a great approximation tool for bound states in the region of equilibrium points of more general potentials. In the simulation, we take advantage of the fact that the energy eigenstates of our solution are separable into position and time-dependent components. In the language of Dirac notation, this takes the form you see here. So we have that any energy eigenstate evolves as a stationary wave function that changes with a single phase dependence. To get a better idea of what this looks like, let's see the ground state in three dimensions, two of the dimensions representing the wave function, and the third representing the position along the x-axis. The rotating blue part of this graphic represents the complex-valued wave function. Each point along the x-axis is associated with two unique coordinates, which represent the real and imaginary parts. The probability distribution is displayed as a green line. The magnitude of this curve corresponds to the relative probability of measuring the particle to be in any given position along the x-axis. Next we have the first excited state. The frequency relates to the energy of the system, which corresponds to our solution that we derived earlier. The higher the excited state, the greater the frequency we find in the rotation of the wave function. Note that probability distributions of both this state and the previous one don't change in time. This is a unique property of energy eigenstates, expressed earlier in the fact that the solution to the eigenstates can be written as stationary states multiplied by a time-dependent phase component of norm 1, which has no impact on the probability distribution defined exactly to be the norm squared. To build more general states, we'll need to express the wave function as a linear combination of the general basis states in the same way you'd build a vector from the basis components in the x, y, and z directions. Our energy eigenstates form a basis over all wave states, which allows us to write in general psi of x and t is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of each of the basis states phi sub n, multiplied by the magnitude of our wave function parallel to that basis state. The phase component here is no longer factorable from the expression, and in general we'll see a time-dependent probability distribution. To illustrate what a more general state looks like, let's see a state that's in a superposition of the first two basis states. The 1 over square root of 2 factor is to properly normalize the wave function. Remember that the sum of the norm squared of all of the coefficients in front of each basis element must add up to 1. In three dimensions, the function looks like this. In this state, immediately we see that the probability density is no longer static, but instead oscillates back and forth between being centered at two separate points. This is a consequence of the fact that the component states of phi naught and phi one don't share a phase, and thus at any given time interfere constructively and destructively in different combinations at each point. Now, what if we wanted to present an initially normalizable state that wasn't immediately decomposable into our basis elements? Let's take our ground state for example and shift it in the x-axis by 2 to get this function. This is a perfectly normalizable state, but there's no clear way to break this into a sum of our basis functions multiplied by coefficients, and in general, this function may be represented by an infinite superposition of all of our basis elements. So how do we approach this? The key realization is that the higher energy eigenstates won't offer a large contribution to our wave function, since our shift in the ground state isn't that large. In a sense, we're just pushing the particle a little way up our quadratic potential, corresponding to only a slight increase in energy, so we should see the energy levels being well approximated by the first 10 states or so. What we can do here is take an orthogonal projection of our state under the first 10 energy eigenstates, and use this to determine how much of our wave function is formed by the phi naught, phi 1, phi 2 to phi 10 states, and then use this fact to view our wave function through time. If we do this, we find that the coefficients for our wave function behave very reasonably, and peak around the second and third energy states before falling off and going to zero as we expected. The result of plotting this in three dimensions is something that's very satisfying. We have a probability distribution around our particle, oscillating very much as a spring might push and pull a particle in a classic quadratic potential. This specific kind of state where we shift the ground state of the quantum oscillator is called a coherent state. 
As we can see, the wave function becomes more compressed as it reaches the center of the potential and spreads out as it reaches its maximum distance from the origin. As you may recall, momentum is related to frequency, so this once again fits with our classical intuition that the particle should have a higher momentum at the minimum of the potential, and a lower momentum at the edges. I want to modify this a little bit and instead localize the particle position a little bit more at t equals zero. This is no longer a coherent state and the probability mass no longer rigidly oscillates back and forth. This provides a good view of the uncertainty relation between momentum and position. Along the edges, we see that the particle is relatively well localized in position space and thus the wave function is not very periodic or sinusoidal, and thus has great uncertainty in momentum. As we fall deeper into the potential, the position becomes more smeared out and instead the momentum becomes more definite, as the curve takes on a more periodic and sinusoidal shape, and thus a more definite frequency. If we take this to the extreme and reduce the uncertainty in position even more, we almost see a delta function in the position, with extremely high uncertainty in momentum, before the particle becomes almost uniformly probable to be found over a much larger region, and the wave function assumes a very periodic shape, with much less variance in momentum. Finally, here are some additional interesting animations, along with the wave functions that describe them.
Thanks for watching. This is my first video on computational physics. I'm not sure if I'll make more, so let me know in the comments if this video interested you, and I may work on content similar to this in the future.